Well, hello, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome. Today, we are once again going to be, you know, making my game, slime experiments. So, let's bring over the game, the Unity window, whatever you want to call it. Now let's fling this thing over here, our little tasks to do to finish the game. Still a work in progress. We might add more later. Anyway, we want to add a level select. We need to make the level select panes and buttons and all that good stuff. We need to make all of our levels, of course, the most important part of the game. We want to make a slime enemy that follows you and tries to reset the puzzle if they touch you. Um, next, we want to add the high scores case in finished level script equal to the number of levels. That's going to be, depending on how many levels we do, number four will probably be one of the last things we ever do before the game is finished. And then number five, add saving into the game, which is going to be a whole thing. So, uh, that's our plan. That's our plan. So I thought first, what we could do is I went ahead and made a game build right here. I thought we'd open it up and just kind of give it a go. For one reason, I want to take a picture. That's odd. Nothing showing up. Bug number one. I mean, I can take a picture of this, but that doesn't do anything for us. Also, the resume button doesn't work here. None of the buttons work here. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and just take a screenshot. Anyway, I basically just need to know the size which I could have taken a screenshot of anything, to be honest, but open up paint. I'm going to save this real quick. Um, what I'm going to call it. I'm going to go to my game information and I'm going to save it to puzzle game stuff. So what I plan to do here, we're just going to hit all the four because I can't close the game otherwise. I'm just going to delete all that information that was saved. Once it doesn't work. Sad. All right. Let's clear that out. And now let's go ahead and import that thumbnail. All right. We're going to go boop and boop. I'm just going to do 32 because I don't know. <laughs> I need to keep that the same across. And now if we throw this out here, we have a huge, huge... Uh, picture thing here. And actually, I should scale it down. To be honest. How do I do that? Well, it might not matter too much. So, we'll test that out later. But yeah. What we'll be doing is we're going to open up... Let me just hit play. See what happens. Did we get an error or anything? No. And why didn't the game load when I loaded it there? I don't know. Weird stuff. Anyway, we're going to load the main menu screen. We're going to unload that. We're going to open up or double click on that to get a, a nice big old picture of our, our thing here. I'm also going to make this smaller so I have more viewing window here. Which makes it nicer. Okay, so first things first, the continue button, I'm just going to go ahead and hide because we've already really done everything we can for that. Uh, the level select button, I want to manipulate and do stuff with, but let's go ahead and open up our level select panel first. So this is going to be where the player goes to select their level. So anything we do in here is going to have to... Uh, fit within this area. 
So, so we're gonna have so many levels, like just so many levels, like 50 levels, right? That's the goal, at least. We probably want some sort of like numbers up here to go from like one, two, three, four, five, yada, yada, for like pages, right? Uh, we're of course gonna want to do a button. So let me real quick, UI, button. Menu, button, and we're just going to go ahead and, of course, change the font color to white. Main menu, it's going to be the text, and then we need to throw on a button, oops, button sprite, there we go. Now we have the main menu button, and we can, of course, make it a little bigger. We want to make the font bigger too, so how about 35? This what's nice and visible. Okay. And we can move that down to the bottom right. Right there. Okay. So, that'll be our very first button. And that one, I think we can actually tie that to... Ooh, gotta add a button first, hold on. Or add a quick feature. If I remember correctly, we can just add the return to main menu button right there. Main menu script, return to main menu, return to main menu. Yep, so we just basically set the select, uh, well, the select panel to be false there, so we can just use that. Perfect. Go ahead and I'm gonna just slurp all these up. I'm gonna leave that one open because we might need to edit that later. The rest of these... The rest of these... Need to. So, let's go public void. Um, we want to select this level. And we need to take in an int called x. We're just going to call it x because that's just a simple value value to keep track of. Okay, so what will happen with this is you're going to hit the button for the level that you want to play, and that button is going to have a number associated with it, right? So it's going to be like level 1, level 2, level 3. And what that's going to do is we're going to pass that number into selected level. Right? We go to the uh, Game World Manager. Yeah, GM.selected level. So we want to do GM.selected level equals X. That way we have that value in there to choose the level. And from there, all we really need to do is call the start game code routine. So start. Code team start game. Oops, not start code team again. Start game. There we go. And so what this will allow us to do is we just go ahead and GM select a level. We update that to whatever we want it to be, and then start the game. Essentially, but we should also up here do GM dot selected level equals one, just to kind of reset everything back to their default values in the GM script. Simple as that. I was gonna move the music down a little bit in volume. Not a whole lot, but just a little bit. Okay. So now, we actually have the select this level button completed which is great, right? Let me just check here. Good thing I checked, because we need to add these. Okay. So we disable the cursor, and then we set the select level uh, that, and then we do the loading, of course. Okay. So with that, all we have to do is the level select button itself which 
really all it's going to do is open up the uh, level select panel that set active true. It's really all it has to do there um, with some extra stuff that we will get to once we actually have some more things fleshed out, I think. How's it going, Schmilly Orc? Welcome to the stream. All right. We're going to set that aside for now. Continue working on the user interface for our level selection thing. So what we're going to need is a couple more buttons. For now, let's go ahead and throw like six buttons up here. We're going to change them to be like numbers. Well, let's not just make them numbers. Let's do like world one, we'll call them. Kind of like the uh, Mario things are like set off into worlds, like there's world one, level one, that kind of stuff, right? That's kind of how we'll do our things here, uh, visibly anyway. So now that we have that, we're just gonna do world one button. And let's go ahead and I don't have anything in the script for that yet. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Get rid of that. And we are going to do public void uh, world select. And we're going to do another int of x and save. That way we're going to be telling it we want to open up this page and that there. So the world button, we want to change the main menu script to be uh, world select and then an integer. So we're going to pass in a value of one there. Now we're going to copy this six more times. So one, two, three, four, Five. Well, I guess we'll just copy it for five right now. Going further, I only plan for right now five worlds sort of things, so we'll, we'll get to more later. So let's go ahead and rename these to what they should be. So this should be the world two button. And we also need to change down here that's telling us to select world two. And we need to change the text to say world two as well. Go ahead and extend all these out I need to do that anyway. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this again. So this is going to be world three. Ah, the tedium of changing button names. You gotta love it. World three. It's going to be world four. And four. And four. This is going to be world five. Oh, we're already at five. Blech. Five, and change this text to be world five. Well, perfect. Okay, I'm just going to delete this extra button that we have. Lovely. Now, we have our, our world select things here. And what I actually might do is grab them and move them over here. Make it a little bit higher and a little more in the corner. That way they're kind of over there. I can you know, move them over this way more if I add more worlds and whatnot. But for now, we'll just do that. And all of them should be now doing the correct thing. So next, what I want to do here is add some kind of instructional text. Okay? We're going to throw this in the upper left here. And I'm just going to make it a, a nice big box right like here for now right there and let's make this kind of centered there it is like that and we'll make this text be 45 point font no 45 not 54 okay so select world Mm 
In fact, I could just probably move this over to here. Kind of get it nice and centered on these guys so it's a little bit better, right? All right, so we have a select world, prompting the player to hit one of the buttons before anything happens, um, which is fine. So by default, we want this, this page to come up, basically, right? And now comes the fun part. So by fun, I mean it's going to be tedious. So we're going to create a panel called World 1. And we're going to have to change the size of this, or else it's going to take up extra space here. We want to kind of make it in this little area here. And we're going to make these nice and equal size, so they're no, not messing around here. Those are nice enough. Oops. No, hit it again. Crap. <clears throat> Let me get off of that real quick. There we go. I hit nine and it causes me to face palm. And let's make these nice round numbers. Perfect. And then one, five, five. Excellent. Okay. So in this area, what we're going to do first of all is make this completely transparent so you cannot see it. This is basically just going to be our, our bounding box or anything we're going to put in here. So in here, we want to create another button. And this one is going to be level one. So we want to make a, a nice kind of sized area. And here's where it's going to come into play that we're going to use the... Where did I open that up to? I dragged that thumbnail in here before, didn't I? Where did I put it? Oh, it's there. We need to move this to... Do we? All right. So I'm going to change the sprite for the button to this which will sort of show us our uh, little picture of the level, right? Keep in mind, it's not actually a picture of the level. I just want it to kind of get the spacing and stuff uh, laid out. So what we can do with the height and the width, this is going to be a 1920 by 1080 uh, resolution. Let's scale it down to one of those sizes that like resembles that. So what if we go like 1080 and then divided by five? That's the height. So that's gonna be 216. And then the 1920 divided by five is going to be 384. That's gonna be our resolution right there. And once again, let me just hit nine to get my face palm out of here. All right, so I think that will be good. It'll give us a lot of space to work with, I think. We'll just kind of see how that goes. In addition to just that, we don't care about this little text. Although I could just take this text and move it up above the button, which I might actually do just for simplicity's sake. And then let's also make this white text. And we want to increase the size probably to uh, 45, maybe. Level one. We'll just kind of do that. And how does that look if I unselect it? Okay, perfect. Now this button, we want to add over here onto that. And we don't actually want this one to start that level because what we want to do is add another panel as well. So let's add a new thing here. And it's going to be pretty similar to the select this level uh, option. However, we are going to do public void 
highlight or I light in this level int x bang. So what this is going to do is we're going to have another panel that kind of comes up over this panel and that'll be the level panel. And what the level panel is going to do is show more information about the level including the high scores. So that's what we'll do. Um, kind of get around that. So before we do that, let's go ahead and select the highlight this level. It's going to be world one. All right. So now we're going to just go ahead and copy paste a bunch of levels here. Actually, let's do left to right. That'd make more sense. Be level two, level two, and we need to of course change the text here as well to level two. I wish I put a space between them. Make it look a little neater. Okay, we'll do that. Let's copy it again and move it over here, and we'll do the spacing after we get them all laid out in a general area. Level three, level three, and level three, yay. So it looks like we have roughly four that we can work with here. Going wide anyway, which means we could have a total of eight levels per world. Unless I had a button in the level selector to select more levels from that world. I might not actually do. We'll see what happens. So we'll just do this for now. Oop. There we go. I always hit enter. Okay. So now that we have these four laid out, what we're going to do now is, first of all, hide all of the text boxes. We're going to go ahead and make them evenly spaced, right? So let's see. That one is at, let's go negative 650. This one should be at positive. So we'll go positive 650 here. And then between negative 650 and the other 650, we need to make these evenly spaced. So let's move this one over to here about. And this one will move to about here. And that's roughly evenly spaced, right? So let's look at the difference between them. So we have 650 minus the 200, and, let's say 25. That's 425 each maneuver, right? So 225 minus 425 is going to give us negative 200, or in this case, positive 200. And then minus 425 gives us the 625, which we're not really at. So that's going to be a little bit off um, by a couple marks. So let's go ahead and add 5 to this to make it 30. And add 5 to this to make it 205. Now instead of 425, we'll be doing 430. And you know what? I think, to the untrained eye, that's roughly the same spacing, so we're not going to worry about too much more of that. Now we're just going to copy the buttons, paste them, and bring them down to the next level. You know, I could fit a couple more buttons down in this area. Now that I look at it, so we could have our original 10 like we wanted. Or even 11, maybe 12 too. No, 12 would not be good. Anyway, where does the, uh, right, that's where it's at. Okay. I think that's still fine. Don't worry about it. Okay, so, 
Let's go ahead and rename these. So starting with this one, it's going to be level five. Let's open up these things here. Five. Six and level six. Seven and seven. Eight. No. Got a step ahead. This one's going to be eight. And eight. And eight. Now let's just make sure. I named those all correctly. So we can see that the text all reads correct, but do the buttons. So eight and eight, seven and seven, six and six, five and five, four and four, three and three, two and two, one and one. Excellent. Now, let's just close those up. And we're gonna grab a little five and six, copy and paste them and just drag them down like we did four to there. Okay. Now let's finish naming these, 9 and 10. And level 10. Ah. Okay. And with this... Again, I hit space. All right, with that, we have our world one finished. So, I think what we can do, instead of going through that whole process again, going to level one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, all the way up to fifty, we can edit some of our code here. And so, what we're going to do is create some new variables private int world selected equals zero. And then private int level selected equals zero. And so with these, what we can do, when we select a world, we can do world selected equals x. There we go lowercase w please there we go world selected equals that when we highlight a level it's going to be level selected equals x i'm not sure if level selected is actually going to matter but fine okay and then we need to add our world panels so we're going to do a serialized field game object world panels. However, we need to make that a list. So we're going to do a list of game objects called world panel. Just like that. And then... Do I... No, no I don't. Hold on. Okay. Better idea. We're then going to make another serialized field for a game object and call it selected level, highlighted level panel. Okay. So, I'll show you what those are doing once we actually get to making the things here. So, when we select the world, what we want to do is we want to make uh, all of the world panels invisible, right? So for each uh, game object G in world panels, G dot set active equals false. And then after everything's set to false, what we're going to do is set the one that we actually want to be true. So we need to do world panels x minus 1 
set active equals true. Let me just double check on that one. So the world buttons, they're not to zero, right? Yeah, so they're one, two, three, perfect, okay. Yeah, X minus one, because the lists start at zero. So it's gonna be zero, one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, and then number one, two, three, four, five, yeah. Okay, so that's what we wanna do with the world select panel. And that's really all the functionality that the world select buttons need to have. So with that, we're done. However, that also means in the return to main menu thing, we need to do for each. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to copy this. Why rewrite the same code that you've already written? Okay. We're going to do that, and then we're also going to do highlight level panel set active equals false. So this will kind of just disable all the level selector stuff if we've gone back to the main menu or what have you. Um, that way, it's just, it's not open when we uh, go in there. So, for example, if we uh, go into level select, we would have this by default, just not active. We'd have to select the world first. Hit world one, you press that. Hit world two, it would disable that, and then reopen world two's selections. Um, and all that good jazz, right? So, that is what we're going to do. So, here comes the fun part now. We're gonna minimize that world one. We're gonna copy it, paste it once, twice, three times, four times. And we're just gonna rename these to world two. World three, world four, and world five. Now each of them has their own set of levels one through 10. So it's gonna be literally just like Mario levels where it's like 1-1, 1-2, 1-3, um, at least to the player, to us and our uh, behind the scenes programming is actually going to be level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, all the way up to 50, um, assuming there's 10 levels in here. And please note we do have a little extra spot here in case we want to add another level to each level or each world. That's no big deal. But that'll come later decision wise, right? So we have these made now. And now we just need to add everything into here. So let's first of all lock this panel so I can select multiple things at once. These are the world panels, so they're going to go into the world panel selection thing. That way, whenever we need them, we can have them. And then we just need to set them all to be not visible. Go. Next, we need to add another panel. UI panel, and this will be the highlighted level panel. And once again, we need to kind of make it a little bit smaller. It's not that one. Here we go. Okay. And this time, we're going to make this black. And let's see. So what, what this will do is we're going to have, for example, world one is going to be open. And the highlighted level panel is going to be open here. But we're going to make that solid black, I think. Although I could add like a, an extra, an actual background and add another one. But I don't think I want to do that. It just looks... A little weird to have like a frame a frame and whatnot so we can just go straight black i'll leave that there in case we want to do that and then i can just kind of do it but you can also see part of the levels back here so when we do select a level we will want to hide the world so in our 
code here, we want to do world panels, uh, world selected minus one set active false. So we just want to hide that panel whenever we highlight a level. That way, what will happen is instead of seeing those down there, which we could potentially click on, we're instead going to have them disable this so we can just see this panel here. And in here, what we will do is we need to add a button, first of all. Actually, I think I'll just copy the main menu button. That way I don't have to do all the prep and stuff for it. So, make another copy. <clears throat> so, back to world select is what we'll call this. And text will be world select or level select, I guess. Level select. We will have to change what this does, but that'll come later. The second button, we want to be load level. Load level. Which means this particular button, it is going to be linked to our main menu script, select this level. which we actually need to change up a little bit because we're not going to want to take an integer. We're just going to want to use the selected, level selected option right here. That way we will just have, dang, hold on. Let me think for a second. So if I just do that, right now the level select is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And it doesn't go any further than that. World select goes 1 through 5. So maybe... What if I do level selected times world selected? Because if we have 10 levels each, as long as we have the same amount of levels in each world, this should work. Because we're going to have 1 times 1 is 1, one times, or 2 times 1 is going to be 2, and so on and so forth. Then we get to 10, then we switch to world 2 for its first level, which should be 2 times 1. No, that doesn't work. Do I need to use a case then? I think I do. I'm just trying to think here how the best way to do this would be. Let's do... We'll do a switch and the case will be world selected case one break so if it's going to be case one gm is just going to equal level selected because world one you don't have to add any multipliers to it right next for world two case two we need to do so this is going to be 10 through 10 through 20. So would it be, I can't just do one times 10. 
because then it goes two times ten, which is gonna be twenty. Which would be a pain. Could I do something else rather than using level select? I could do another switch and just be very simple about it. But that's just a bunch of code. Ah, how I just have to do that? Gods forgive me. So, in this switch, we're going to make another switch. Four. Level selected. Case one. Break. I'm going to copy this ten times. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we're going to have to change these numbers. Oops. And ten. Okay. And we're just going to have to like hard lock the numbers at whatever they're going to be. So 10, 11, 12. Why are you telling me to delete this? <laughs> Why would you do that? No, can I, can I tell you to not? It's so hard to like see what I'm doing when it's bright freaking red. Why am I selecting all of this? Hold on. I'm gonna just real quick copy that so I don't have to hit the backspace every time. I just have to do that. And 17, that's gonna be 18. And the last one is going to be 19. So that what it's going to be. Or that. So it's a switch and a switch. Yay. Which means it would be very easy to make level 11 and 12 and stuff now. I just have to switch all this. So that's, that's fine. We're going to go ahead and grab all this. And case three. Right? And we just have to switch all these to be two in the beginning. Okay, and that's for world three. Next, world four, break. And let's just do world five, break, right there as well, okay. And for this one, we're gonna start at world 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, and the last 49 through 50. So, 41, 42, 43, 44. Hold on. How did, hold on. One through ten. Oh, fuck my life. It doesn't start at ten, it starts at eleven. <laughs> which... Which makes it so much easier. I don't need a switch and a switch. GM dot selected level equals level selected plus 10. Because 1 plus 10 is 11. 1 plus 2 is 12. All the way up until 10 plus 10 
is 20. It was so easy. And GM.selected level equals level selected plus 20 for 21, 22, 23, 24, and so on. Plus 30 for 40 through 40. Uh, For, for 31 through 40. And then this one, I'm just going to copy this because I'm tired of typing it out. Plus 40, which gives us level 41 through 50. Great. We'll go right. And this works even if I add other levels, I think, too. So if I add 1 through 12, for example, I just need to change this to 12, I think. And then it would be 13 starting, going all the way up from there. Yeah, I think that's all I have to do is just increment by 12. So it would be like 12 and then 24 and then 36 and 48 is what the numbers would be if I added more. I would just have to, however many are in the previous tiers, you just add those together. So let's say this one had 12 levels and this one had um, 11 levels. It would look like 12 and then 23, I think. But for now, we're just gonna plan on 10 levels each world. And that's gonna out me. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Whenever the main menu loads up, I'm also gonna reset the world selected to zero and the level selected to zero when that happens. Perfect. Okay. <sighs> we're in business now, boys. Okay, so load level. Wait. Oh, right, it's different because I removed the... Uh... Uh, select this level, there we go. Perfect. And then the level select button. Right, we need to add real quick. And code for this, because we're not going to return to the main menu. We want to do a public void. Return to level select. Okay. And what we want to do in here is we want to do the highlighted level panel set active equals false. And then we want to do world panel uh, world selected minus one dot set active equals true. However, thinking about it, if we, since we still have access to the buttons on top, if we select one of the buttons, what we should also do here is we want to do the highlighted level panel dot set active false. Because we don't want to see that uh, if we select a new world, right? So. That's perfect. So this one should be perfected now. I still have code to do in level select. Needs more. Okay. I like this level. I'm going to show you all of that. Should I? Maybe? I was thinking. I can do it like whenever you beat a level, it unlocks in the level selector. But I could make it to where the level selector doesn't show up until you beat the game. 
And then I would only have to do like a check to see if the level select button shows up when you beat the game or not. Which would mean I don't have to hide levels and load levels or level buttons when you haven't played that level yet. I think it's more fun to do it this way though. So, that's what we'll do. Return to level select. Power the panel. Oh, panel selected. Okay. Uh, this level. World's panel. False. Uh, we need more code here. More code. Select this level. That's perfect. Okay. Save that real quick. Actually, before we do anything else, we're also going to do two. Uh, actually? Nope, that already takes care of that, so we can minimize that as well. Although, what I should do here as well is world selected equals zero and level selected equals zero. Just to get those nice and rounded out. Okay. Hmm. Okay, let's set aside my, my current line of thought. I'll think of that in the background. Let's just make sure we have our buttons linked to where they need to be. So return to level select. That, and that's done. So in here, we want to add some text boxes and make them a little wider and have it a little bigger as well. Let's center this one and make this 50 size font. Best times. We'll call this. Let's line it up with this uh, grid line here. Nice and centered, okay. Go ahead and copy this, paste it down below here. Let's change this to 40, 35 size font. There we go. And then let's, how do I want to align it? Maybe to the left. One, zero, zero, colon, zero, zero, colon. Zero, zero, like that. I'm just kind of call that best times text, so I have that there. So if I do that, that wouldn't be bad. Because all times are going to have that many characters, so I could do first place. Name it like that. It's hard to see on the back. Black background. You know, let's actually make these center uh, in the boxes there, so we don't have to worry too much about that. And we'll start this one at... ...265. 200, so each one will be 65 down, right? So, boop, 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 boop. One more. I think, right? So 65 down, so 200 minus 65 minus 65. 
That should be... Let me check here. 135. 70. And then... 5. Negative 60. And then... Negative 125. Negative 190. And the last one, I think, negative 155. Hmm. I think I might do two columns instead of one. Because it's uh it looks a little weird having it like that, don't you think? So we'll grab the first ones. Let's rename them first, actually. I'm just gonna call them first, second, third, fourth, because otherwise I'd have to retype burned first. There's third. Here's fourth. Here's fifth. Here is sixth. Seven. Eight. And nine. Okay. So, yeah, I am missing one. So let's grab one through five. And we're gonna just grab one through nine. I'll have to realign them later. Maybe I don't have to realign them. Maybe that's close enough that I can get away with being like, ha ha. Nope. Okay. So let's copy the fifth. Throw it over here. Which is be seven oh three. And this is ten. Cool. So now I just gotta edit this text. Instead of the zeros, let's go with uh dash dash colon dash dash colon dash dash. Copy that. We'll do second paste, third paste, fourth paste, fifth paste, sixth paste that, seventh paste that, eighth paste that, ninth paste that. Oops, I forgot the foot. And then tenth paste that. All right, cool. Yeah, I think it's, it's better to have them right justified because then the tenth uh, doesn't cause a misalignment for the times. So essentially, these are what they're going to look like until a value gets into them. So the first time the player plays, they will, of course, be first, and they'll show their first time. And that's how it's going to go. Okay, so we need to add these into the main menu script as well. So, serialize field, um, list of text mesh pro GUI not tech. No, I think it's just mesh mesh pro GUI. Um, is that? No, that's not. That's a pro dot. No. I think I have it in the timer script. Yeah, there it is. It's TMP Pro. A list of these, which are going to be called the high scores. Save. Okay. <laughs> now, main menu canvas. Block it. We're going to grab the first through tenth places. 
throw them into high scores. And they should in the same order that I had them, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, fifth, yep. And then the highlighted level panel, we need to place in there as well, so we have that. Good stuff. So I'm going to make an empty object called high scores texts. Just to make this a little less long right here, we're going to copy them all and put them into this thing, which I can then close down. Okay. And you know what? I might as well do that for other things as well. Create empty world buttons. And then create another empty called world panels. There we go. Now all of that fits oh so nicely into this little area. What's really nice is the empties, they don't do anything, they're just empty little things, so it's perfect. We can uh, unlock that now. Okay. So I think what we can do here now is let's see. What if I add on the button? Or another button, an image. Level image. I want to move the world buttons and stuff up higher. I want to move that text up there as well. What was the menu button? Oh, it's in this, right. Those two buttons are load level and select level buttons. Okay. So with the level image, we want to make it have basically this in it as well. Basically showing a bigger thumbnail of the level that will be played, that will be loaded. I figure that's something really easy to show. Um, that way you can have a, a close up to be like, oh yeah, this is the level I want to do. Yada yada. Right. So. 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 I need to do what is just 1920 divided by 0 0.5. That's not gonna work. Yeah, okay. Uh, 1920 divided by 1.5. That's close. Uh, 1920 divided by 1.75. That'll work. So the width is going to be 1097.14, and we'll do 29. Right there. As for the height, we'll do 280, 1080 divided by 1.75, which gives us 617.1429. Or I guess we're only going to that far. Okay. Cool. So that's the uh, the resolution that we will be using. And actually, if we uh, were to pop this off, then I can make it bigger. Much more reasonable resolution, right? So this is what it would look like. Well, we'd actually have a little more space than this, and it'd be a little more fitting. But essentially, this is how it would look if it was in the game. So we'll just go ahead and put this back. Go. All right, so I think that's all we're really gonna do for the level selection. Now it's all up to coding. So we need to do a serialized field for image. Uh, 
level image. This might be tricky. We're going to want to grab this. So I just did the off screen because I wanted to drag this over here without swapping things back and forth. I'll show you what I did in just a moment. Let's save that real quick. Open this up. So I added this line right here to do the level image. So when we highlight, actually we need more code as well now. We need to do a serialized field list of sprites. Level images. I think that's what I want to do. Or you know what? Instead of just having one big list, it might just be easier to do world one level images, two, three, four, five. World two, world three, world four, world five. Like that. Cool. Also, what I should do here before I get carried away, we're gonna go ahead and delete that. Oh, it's blinding. It's so bright and white. I hate it. All right. So, what we'll do now, we don't need this. We don't need this open. So my, my question is, when do we want to load up the... The, the high scores and the images. Well, the high scores are obviously when we do highlight this level. That's what we're gonna do. Um, but, but. When are we going to display which images or like what levels we have unlocked? It's either gonna be world select or when we hit level select. One of these two. Maybe more code, question mark? And actually what we should do is we should do another list of game objects called world buttons. So that way we can disable the world buttons if the player has not gotten to those worlds yet. So let's do that real quick. And I'm going to actually, in the world, one images, throw that one there. So we have at least a button to test with. And then I added the world buttons there. So we want to go world buttons. All of those go into there. Excellent. Save. Now the one thing that I'm going to have to do is when we actually do create the levels and get pictures inside the world panels, each one of these I'm going to have to replace their image with the thing we're going to have to use. So it's going to be a bit of a pain. Speaking of... I'm also going to need some extra stuff as well here. We'll actually show making this. So we're also going to need some more list of game objects. <clears throat> w1 or world one level buttons. Four, five, six. So two, three, four, five. And so what these are going to do is these are the actual levels themselves that we're going to be selecting, uh, which is going to be a bit of a pain to deal with, but. What are you going to do? So with these, we need to, this is still locked, so that's perfect. We're going to go ahead and unlock all of these real quick, or expand all these, I should say. 
And then we have the level buttons here. So we're going to select all these down to here, drag them into there. Same for world two. Drag them into here. Drag all these into here. Drag all these into here. And last but not least, world five, drag all these into here. So that way you can hide the worlds that do not have stuff. Uh, do not have an unlock, I should say. For that. Um, I think we can minimize or at least hide the panel here. Perfect. Okay, this is what the player would originally see. Open up this. And in fact, what I should do real quickly is I should just hide all of the level buttons. Let me just open up all of these things. I can just add it once at a time. Swoop, and then we're gonna do that one, that one, that one, and that one deselected. And we're gonna hit that button, which will allow us to hide all of the buttons at once. Okay, now I can just hide the world selections, which honestly, I don't have to really hide the world selections, but that's whatever. Okay, it's safe. Ah, oh, boy. Okay, so. Now that we have that stuff sent and done and whatever. Let's see. First and foremost, we need to take the level that we are in. And we need to, when we highlight the level, we want to display the thumbnail for it. So for here, we want to level select equals X. And we need to do, what did I name that one? Level image. Okay, so level image dot uh, right, what it's called, equals. And then let's just for now do world one level images images and then I'm going to put zero there for right now because that's all that really matters so we'll do that for right now and then I'm actually going to show the level panel last so what I need to do between now and then is we need to figure out which sprite we're going to be using Right? And to do that, we need a switch. World selected. Case one. Break. Two, three, four, five. Okay. Now we can cut this. Paste that. I'm going to do level selected minus one for all of these. And we just got to change the world blank level selected images to that. So the way this works is first of all, we decide which world we're in, that way we can choose which array we're gonna take the images from. And then we use the level selected, which is gonna be one through uh, nine, or one through 10, sorry. And we subtract one from that to get whatever image we're going to be using, right? That should make some sense to y'all. And finally, after we update whatever image we're gonna be using, we load the panel, so that the people can see. Actually, did I not? Oh, I don't have a uh... oh, that level panel dot set active true. I didn't have that in effect.
Excellent. Okay. However, before we do that, get high scores. So, this one's going to be a little tricky. We're going to have to use our event tracker to figure out where we're at. Oh boy. So we have one per level. I might have to do a... Oh man, this is gonna suck. Let me think for one second here. Since these are all variables, I wouldn't be able to just do like level and then another variable like x top 10 i'd have to actually call each of these individually which sucks um what i could do no i was thinking i could like just make this list a list of the top 10s for all of world one but if i did that what would happen is I would have to sort through it in another spot. So I might as well just do it here. Well, for right now, we only have five top tens. So that's real quick. Um, Need to add more high score cases in finish level script equal to the total number of levels. Also need to add more in ET and in the main menu script for highlight this level. All right. So we'll just put off doing all the work until we actually determine how many levels we're making. Okay. So what we'll do, we'll just do our first five. So let's do a switch. Uh, level selected. Case. One. Break. And I'll just do 10 here for the sake of things. Ah, get down one too many times there. Okay. So we got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I missed one more. So let's just do 10. All right. So then what we're going to want to do. Uh, Hold on. Couldn't I make this easier? Hmm. Rather than making it all huge here. I'm gonna have to copy this to the other ones as we go on. Um, but what we are sure we're gonna have to do is take each string and put it into the thing here. So for, for example, um, we would need to go, uh, what did I name the high scores up here? Oh, I just named them high scores. So it's just high scores. And then, so it's a uh, high scores zero equals and then et dot level one top ten zero all right i got a zero dot text right there well that's just going to be the number so i have to do um 
first. Oh, we have to do the, that first. Like that, right? And then plus that. That's how we had it in the, the high score thing, right? Let me open up the highlight panel. Yes, okay. I gotta think how to do this because if there is no value here, it's gonna throw an error. So do I instantiate these before? For example, um, I think I can do like nine nine. Well. Let's just do this first, comma, that, and just see if this works. Equals new. Like that? No. Ah, crap. Do I have to actually make a string somewhere? Let me see. Uh, where is my... Google. Let's throw this stuff to the side here. Just one moment. Oh. Close that one. Um. C sharp. List how to instantiate or initialize a list right here. Uh, String, that's a string list. Mm. Using illustration keyword. Wait, can I just do that? So hold on. So it's saying I can do this and then do like that? And that initializes it? Okay. So nine nine colon nine nine colon nine nine. That's three, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, okay. So this will allow me to initialize. The array, apparently, which is fine. Weird way to do it, but okay. I'm just going to copy this to all of the others. I'll start at the bottom so I don't have to scroll down. What this will do is initialize the lists to all have 999. Um, also, I'm not going to go ahead with that. I had to scroll down anyway. Let me move these up above. And I'm going to create a region. Region, high score lists. Because it's going to get long otherwise. End region high score lists. There we go. I'll just kind of leave that at the end of the uh, thing here because we're probably going to have to have 50 of these. Okay. What's what's that? So now it'll actually have a numerical value in it, and that way we're not going to get any errors when we go through and do this. So I'm just going to copy all of this down here. For now, gotta rename all these though. Okay, and we 
course, got to change these values. Yep. Come on. Ah, crap. And then one. Or, no, that's day zero. This one goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine. Okay. The one saving grace is that I can now just copy this to any of them down here, and I'll just have to change the level number, which I'm going to have to change here anyway to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then, of course, ten, which we do not have those. So that's already great. I'm going to have to make those real quick, so... Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Let me save that. Let me go over here, and those errors disappear. Yatta. Okay. Now I just have to copy all these down to here. And then make 50 more of these, or 40 more of these now. Uh, such a pain. Okay. Anyway. I can now, I guess, just minimize all of these. For right now, to make this a little bit more readable. Okay. Purr. Let me go ahead and move my things back here. That one needs to go down. I had to clear space to get to my internet windows. Okay. Now then. Now that we have the high scores partially implemented, uh, that's great. Get high scores. I think I just did that up there, so we can get rid of that. So that'll update the high score panels, or what have you. I know with 999 are their values as we load stuff in. We can, I think, get rid of this. We can just kind of minimize that for now. Okay. I'm also going to edit this to say... Ah, uh, the memory script from the first world. World is done. Need to finish others. Here we go. Okay. Perfect. Now. Between these two, we need to determine where we want to load all of the world data from. No. What? Yes? Give me a second. Makes sense. Okay. Go with that. Okay. We're going to do it in both. So, when you hit level select, we want to do, first of all, int lv equals et dot highest level. This will tell us how many worlds we need to load, right? So we then want to do, can I do a switch where it is a 
Something like that. I can. Okay. So. Let me think how we want this to work. Because it's going to hit the f one that's true. If I do that, no, that's not what I want to do. I wanted to just do level and then I want to do case of level greater than 10 is what I wanted to do. But I can't do that. Okay, so we need to do an if else statement. If. Uh, Else if, blah. Else if, blah. Else if, blah. That's one, two, three, four. Else. Okay. So we need to do here the least likely one first, because we did the first one, which is just if level is less than. 10, uh, 11. It would always be true. Or, would it? No. Let me think here for a second. If level is less than 11, does that make sense to work? Because it be true if it's going to be 0 through 10, which would be world 1. I think that works out. We'll have to do another one. So the next one, if level is less than 21. Because if this one's true, it's going to go in here and not check any of the other ones. If this one's true, it's going to go in here and not check any of the other ones. So yes, this works. So we want to do world buttons zero dot zero dot set active equals true. I'm just gonna copy this because if the second one is true, we also gotta do the same thing here. However, we're then going to add world choose button. This one's gonna be the same thing but with world three. And then I'm gonna do this here. World three and world four. Then we got world three, four, and five. That's what we're gonna do. So level is less than 31 if level is less than 41. And this one would be if level is less than 51, which we don't have a 51, so it's always going to be true to have all the roll buttons there. And that's how we're going to enable the buttons at the top. Which, honestly, I should go ahead and just disable all of them as well right here. So, by default, World 1 should always be, I guess, activated if you've beaten the level. But we'll just do this just so it gets, it's there, right? And the reason also I did level instead of ET highest level here all the time, because I didn't want to write that whole thing out the whole time. Or all the time. <coughs> all right. So that's the level select bit that we're going to do. In the world select, when we actually tap on the world, we're going to do pretty much the same thing. So let's copy this. Now, we want to do int level equals
How do I want to do this? Well, regardless, let's do ET dot highest level. And we, of course, want to get rid of this stuff in here. Because we will not be using this. Okay. Because we need to make this generic for whatever world we're in, whether it's one, two, or three. So, we can't really use highest level by itself. We need to do something with it. So, for all highest levels, I guess we could check... There's too much math in this particular section of doing this. So one thing we can do is potentially, if the highest level Let's just start with the, the second world, for example. So that would be numbers a world 11 to 20, right? You need to check for one. So what we need to do, figure out one. So would it just be Level hmm. I might have to do two. So I think I know how to do it with the non first level. So if it's if it's two, what we can do is level minus world selected times 10. Equals one. Right? Because that way, we're in world two, so that's gonna be uh, 20. No, we would just want world selected minus one times 10. But then that'd be zero. No, no, because it's, it's world. What is zero times 10? Zero. That would work. So world one minus one is zero times 10 is zero. Level one equals one, right? World two minus one is 10. 11 minus 10 equals one. And so on and so forth. That works. Okay, so then what we wanna do is do uh, where was what were they called again? Shit. Right, I'm using these. So I might just do multiple things here. Int number of levels. Oops. Num of 
levels equals zero. And then in here, we can do num of levels equals one, right? Although, couldn't it do a switch here then? Because I think I can just do. Oops. Because last time we kind of learned that I can do stuff in there. And I can do case one. All the way to 10, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we don't have to do a, an if statement, which takes up a lot more space. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I can just copy number of levels here. This is stupid. I can just do... I can just do that. I can just do that. Because that's going to be a number between 1 and 10. I can just set the number of levels equal to the highest level minus the world selected number minus one times 10. God, I would have felt so stupid if I would have had all that code in there for no reason. Cause that's like just extra computation that needs to happen. But now I can just do that. But, but we do need to also do a, another switch for the world selected. Two, three, four, five. And this is just simply because we need to use the number of levels um, to change the... I'm actually going to take a quick picture of this. Just so I have that information. Okay. I don't have to keep scrolling back up and down. <coughs> in fact, I think I'm done with the event tracker there, so let's toss that in there. Just give us some free space. Alright, so here we need to know what world selected we have so we can choose how many world selected buttons we open up, right? So, I guess we do a for loop. For int i equals zero, while i is less than num of levels i plus plus i think that's going to be the quickest least amount of code we need to use it because then we just do world one level buttons i set active true right Because if we have, say, three levels, right, we're going to start with zero, activate the first level, activate the second level, and that's going to be then equal to two, or that's going to be equal to one. So we, we, zero is the first one, two is the second one, or one is the second one, three, 
is going to activate the third level. Hold on, I'm, I already forgot what the basic practice is. Let's say we have number of levels is going to equal three. We're starting at zero, so that's zero, one, two. That's three levels. That's what we want to do. So we're going to copy this to the other ones. Let's just start at the lowest so I don't have to keep messing around. And we're going to change these to world two, world three, world four, and world five. Okay, so with that, we have a way now to show how many uh, levels and stuff we have and show all the different thing of a things, right? Great. So let's go ahead and save this real quick. Let's hide the level select panel. And we'll save it again. Okay. So let's assume that we have level select open, right? Let's hit play. Okay. So let's go to Do Not Destroy and the GM so we can get to the event tracker. So let's put our highest level at one, just so we can actually do something here. We'll hit level select. Okay, world one showed up. We hit world one and it shows a ball of this. Why? Why did that happen? It shouldn't. We hit world select, which was that. Each one can. So shouldn't be showing these buttons here. Are these not? Hold on. That's that. No, wait, what? I'll select world buttons, world button one is open, world one, all these buttons are open. Why? But why are they open? Well, the thing that determines whether or not we set the world level buttons active is this. So we can go debug.log and then do num of levels right there. And we can just output however many levels we have. That'd be the simplest way to check what's happening. Let's go to level select, world one. Nine? Where's my, where my GM? Right, I forgot to set that. Hold on. Let's try that one more time. GM, set you to one. House is 10. Actually, hold on. Did it show 9 before? Oh, I forgot to check. It did. This is going to be one. One minus zero should be one. Unless it's doing something weird. So debug.log. 
world selected minus one. First we'll check that. Then we'll check the rest of this. Because we know what level is going to be. We know what world selected is. Is it for some reason zero times 10 not zero or something? I don't know. Or is something else happening? So first we get zero from the world selected. Okay, let me just drag this over here. So we get zero from our world selected minus one, right? Oh, goddamn order of operations. Son of a bitch. That was the issue. The uh, world select minus one times 10. Of course, it's going to do one times 10 first due to the order of operations. So now, if we run it, it should work as intended. Now that we've added a couple of brackets, zero, 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 zero. Which makes sense because the event tracker is at zero for the highest level. Now that it's one, we can see level one. Perfect. Okay, hold on, let me set that back to zero. Go back to the main menu, level select. Why is world one showing up? I bet there's some stupid stuff happening somewhere else too. Let's take a look. So that would be under the level select button. Yep. So we need to be zero is less than level, but all right, I need an and. Okay, so if zero is less than level and level is less than 11, it's gonna go into this one. Which means, since it could be zero at any time, I'm gonna have to actually Actually, you know what? Nah, screw that. If zero was less than level, do nothing. LOL. <laughs> we'll just eliminate that possibility from happening. So then it only checks the other ones. Big brain. So now if I hit play, hit level select. <coughs> Touche. What would happen if I put a break here. No. Can you do go to? How do I how do I do this? How do we how do we do go to? How does go to work? Okay. 
Okay. Let me just start to go to... I think I could just go to like a line. That'd be too easy, wouldn't it? Okay, fine. Fine. Give me this. I'll do it the other way and actually have to manipulate all of these values. I think this is what I need to do. Stop it from showing the World 1 selection button when we uh, don't want it to. We need to make sure that zero is never an option by making sure that level is always greater than zero in each of these. So none of these will let it go through if level is less than the previous. So that should take care of that. Little issue. Level select. You have no world selection or anything. We're Gucci. We're Gucci main. Okay, but I'm gonna go to the main menu. Change event tracker to one for highest level. Do that. Do that. Index out of range. We're at. It is saying this line here is out of range. The event tracker. Why? Why does the top five not have anything saved, but the top lower five here do? What? Hold on. What did you say to me? Is there something that, like, in the awake messes with the event tracker? Is it because I added them after? That's it, isn't it? Because originally these things were loaded. These things initially got set up here. They didn't have values. So when they came up into the inspector, they just decided to say, screw you. I won't do what you told me. Well, that's fine. I'll just manually type this in real quick. I thought it updated all that stuff. Apparently not. Now it has it. So. Okay. So now if I hit a play and I try to open up this, and that, and then that. We can see only the first value showed up. I 
mean, I guess that makes sense, right? Because... How did I write this again? Oh! Right. You ever just feel smart when you're doing something, then you think back and you're like, oh. And you look at something and you're like, oh crap. Well, that, that's what they did. Let me just go ahead and do this real quick. And by real quick, I mean it's going to take just a little bit of time. So, yeah. This wasn't showing all the high scores. It was just showing one score for whatever level you clicked on. So if you clicked on level 8, for example, you would only be shown the 8th high score. all of this then. So it's going to be 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8. just said I'm gonna finish this real quick like five times in the past couple of seconds here okay now let's get all these numbers corrected Two, three, nope, all of them should be one. Now for all of two. Two, 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 two. Three, 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 three. Now four, 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 four. Fives, five. Uh, five, 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 Is just slowly but surely take out these freaking numbers. And then all the eights, all the nines, all the tens. All right, cool. I'm just gonna hit nine again to stop face palming. And... So yeah, this will be under full to do for 
another 40 times. But anyway, we, we solved that one issue. Let's get that and let's go to level select. There we go. Now all the nines are showing up. Hot damn. Okay, so I got an error. When I hit load level, because I don't have a level to load there. Uh, I haven't made any levels. That makes sense. That, that tracks. Okay. Level select button. You can be hidden now. Okay. So I think everything is properly linked and set up for main menu, level button functionality. I was at 59, which has changed location since we added a bunch of this stuff, but it was this button. Everything seemed pretty fluid. And so these ones are done. Um, okay. Well, I kind of want to get all the base systems set up before we uh, actually get to level building. So I think number three would be pretty easy to implement. Let's start by getting our slime buddy here. Clear all these errors and the assets. Where's my my slime at? Under sprites, right? Okay, uh, we want the red slime. We want the idle and the move, and we need to cut them and make them nice and good and all that good jazz. Okay, sprite editor. Just like before, we're gonna do count. Got four columns, slice, five. This one, sprite editor, slice, six columns, apply. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll go to the training space now. So let's load that scene and unload the main menu. And we'll just go ahead and go bloop. Okay, so first of all, let's go ahead and add my prefab for my character in here. Just so I, well, actually I don't need that because the GUI is going to. What's this? Why is this in here? I'm just going to delete that. And let's just double check real quick. Um, level select panel, highlight panel, high score texts. OK, fifth is still there. So I don't know why. That showed up here. Bizarre. Okay, anyway. So we basically need to make the um, little red slime an object, just like our slime was an object. So red slime idle. Hello there. We're going to call it red slime. We want the unscaled time for its movement. We want to add a box collider 2D. And we want to, of course, shrink it around our little guy here. A little wider. 
Zia's puff out as he lands and whatnot. Next, we want to change the animation. So here's his little idle animation, which I think we want to slow down to six. He's going to be a little more energetic than our slime. We then want to add a new thing for red slime move. And then we can copy the movement, just like before, into here. And change this to eight. Let's see how that looks. Okay. It's not bad. What if we do seven? Four, six. We'll make him a little bit slower than our slime. So that they cannot catch up to us as easily, right? We don't want to move at the same speed, otherwise you'll never be able to get away from it and get some distance. So that's what we're going to do here. Next, we have to go to, first of all, throw him in here. And we need to go to the animator. We need to make transitions here. And this one is just going to be a Boolean for is moving. That. Make transition, make transition. And we can stop him from jumping around like that. Settings, zero, tick, tick. Add is moving is true, perfect. Add is moving is false. Zero, boop, boop. And that's done. So he'll be able to move to try and catch us now. Uh, well, he can try to move, but he's just gonna kind of be jumping around like a little, a little loony, not doing anything. Don't think... Does he need a rigid body? Let's give him a rigid body. I want them to be able to smack into things and be like, ha ha, I'm messing up your block placements and all that stuff, right? So that's what we'll do. And... Let's see. Okay. So we have him here. We need to make a new script for... I'm gonna... I guess just make a normal script in the script area because I don't know what it's gonna be called yet. Uh, we'll create the red slime script. That's what we'll call it. Let's go ahead and double click it to open it up in our viewer here, and then we'll add the red slime script to this guy here. Okay, so what we want to do is create a way for the slime to chase us could like constantly be going after us. So, first of all, we want to make a serialized field with a uh, integer int called speed. I think that's how we have him set up, right? Is speed a, it's a float, okay. We also need to make it public. I want to keep the variables sort of the same so that they can be affected by the conveyor belts and stuff too. So I'm actually going to grab this information. For that. I probably also want to grab a movement vector, and a rigid body. Here. And then on awake, rigid body 2D equals... That. I didn't need to copy all of that, but whatever. What else do I have here? Is moving by default going to be is moving away? Oh, 
public bool is moving equals false. And just on awake, we'll do that again is, is moving equals false. Um, the movement vector, we probably want to grab the animator so we can switch between it being animated and not. So we'll just basically copy everything that the player has. Uh, animator, 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 right there. I don't think I need to interact with anything GM. Or do I? Maybe I do need to do player allowed to move. Or him as well in update. If. Because if he pauses it, I don't want the guy to be able to keep moving, right? GM, GM. If GM dot player allowed to move equals true, we can then do whatever we got to do here. Right. All right, we will need a rigid body because it does have to actually move with a velocity. Okay. So what I'm going to do is navigate to my really old game called Slime Evolution and open up a script called Enemy, which I think is what contains the thing to follow the player. Let's see. Yeah. Let me first reread all this to figure out what the hell's going on with it. So we have a speed, we have a save speed, which doesn't matter for us right now. We have his HP damage, yada yada yada. We have a game object called player which in Awake we get that, which we need for our current slime. So let's go ahead and throw this over here. Uh, so in Awake, well, I guess first of all, we want to do game object player. And then we can just copy this over to here to find the game object player. Easy peasy. And then, uh, we already got that stuff. So set target is going to do that, right? So we want to make that stuff as well. I don't have a character field though. What was character doing? Target character. What is target character? Lowercase t. Ah, it's for attacking. Okay, so that doesn't matter for us. So we just want the target destination. Right there. Um, so, we want to set our target, so let's go ahead and add a uh, public void set target. And we will do game object target. And I'll just copy this over here. Okay, 
Then we have our target object, our target game object, yada yada yada. Excellent. Now... What we should do... Start... That just doesn't matter for us. Let's minimize that. Get it out of here. So in a wake... We would... Set the player as the target here. So we could do that right now. So yeah, in a wake, why not? We'll do set target player. Easy. Okay. So what that'll do is it will make the target destination and the target object the player that it wants to try to get to. It doesn't make it move yet, though. Not yet. I don't think I need the in children here. Don't talk about that. I'm not sure why I used it in the other one, but whatever. All right. So. Stop movement. Movement disable. Set stats. We do need it on collision. So. Private void. On collision. Enter 2D. I know that one says stay 2D, but stay that's because it's constantly going to be damaging them um, if they're touching it. Attack doesn't matter, take damage doesn't matter. Okay. So. We want to do if collision dot game object equals target game object. We then want to teleport player back to the start. And reset the level. Okay. That'll be something for a little later. I'm gonna have to figure out various different things for that. Um, stuff like, I'm gonna move the player back, so I'm gonna have to reference the player to do that. I'm gonna have to reference the level, but Maybe I make a new script called Level Reset, and that takes all of the different things that are movable or editable in the level, and it like changes them around, puts them back to where they were. We're also gonna have to move the red slime back to where it was to begin with, and all that good jazz. So. We'll think on that later. For now, let's just get him moving towards the target. So, the thing is, I don't want him to move immediately. So, we want to do another public void start movement. And in this, we will do I guess I can just set is moving equals true. Okay. And we also want to do um, animator dot set bool. Uh, is moving, comma, is moving. 
I mean, honestly, I could just do true here, but whatever. So basically, that'll mean that the thing can start moving and it's going to go do its thing. Now, now, we don't need that. What matters is these update and fixed update things, right? So let's copy fixed update as well and get it in here. And we will just do the same thing we did here. Okay. Instead of move speed, I'm just gonna call it speed. Um, our rigid body, what did I call this one? Rigid body. Rigid body 2D. The velocity equals direction times speed. Okay. And then the direction is going to be our target destination position minus the current position, not normalized. So essentially what this does is it's going to take the target destination minus the enemy's position, normalize it, which honestly, I don't really know what that means, uh, other than like it says returns the vector with a magnitude of one. I don't know what the hell it means. That's gonna be the direction we're gonna go. So if we're like, say, one, zero, zero for the vector, which means they're up, minus, and let's say we're zero, 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 the direction's gonna be one, zero, zero, so we're gonna be moving up, right? We're gonna be moving at that location. And then we're gonna be moving at that location at at speed for the velocity. Right, and that's how that works. Now, in the update, what we need to do is grab this, and what this will do, and I think I actually need to switch these around, but we'll see how it goes. So, <clears throat> actually, hold on, didn't I move? Oh, he's still one scale. Okay, perfect. So, this little guy, his scale is going to be the local scale. The rest of what we're just using that as a value for right now. And then, we want to get the player's position relative to the enemy's position. If the player is to the right of the enemy, which means that their x value would be greater, I think. We want to flip it, uh, flip the the x value of the scale so that they're facing the opposite direction that they currently are, right? So that's what that does. And I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna do that. And we're going to do else. Because obviously if you pause the game, I don't want the enemy to look like he's still like jumping around um, and moving towards you, uh, even if he's just standing still. So what I wanna do is do is moving equals false right ah, i gotta think how to do this no Anyway, we copied over what we needed to, we can close out of this. So 
So when we pause, what happens? We do stop movement and start movement, right? So, first of all, red slime, add tag. I thought I added an enemy tag already. Apparently not. Enemy. Okay. Have I used movement vector? No, let's get rid of that. So in GM, when we're stopping movement, I think we want to do game object enemy equals game object dot find game object with tag enemy. So I'm not sure if that's going to be null or what if there's no enemy available. But I just want to see that. So we're going to get the enemy. We're going to check to see what the hell it is. And we're going to check if enemy is not null. We're going to do enemy dot get component red slime script dot oh, and uh, hmm. yes I think I want to make the animator public so public animator animator right that way I can do animator dot set bool is moving false. That way it will just stop the movement animation. And then we're going to do the same thing down here. And if enemy is not null, we want to change this back to true. That way it will start and stop moving as the enemy. Yeah, you get, you, I think you get the picture. Okay. Don't have to do anything else really here. I think this is all that matters. It's just going to matter about whether or not they're moving left or right. So that's a thing. Um, I will need, just to start things off, I think. So the player will take a moment to spawn in. So I think if they're if you're choosing a level that is, we'll do a enumerator here. So I the enumerator uh, wait for target. The rest of the stuff, since it's interacting with its own components, is fine. Then we can do start code routine, wait for target, and then we need to grab a yield. What's the best place that has one? Right here. 
Oh yeah. And we're just also going to wait for five seconds. Because, I mean, the slime is never going to immediately be moving towards the player. They're going to either be in a cage until you trigger something, or something happens. Um, so it doesn't really matter. We, we can even set it for like one full second. That's fine. Because um, start movement is what's going to actually happen. And trigger the thing to move. So my, my idea is... Let's say you hit a pressure plate, and the pressure plate is tied to a red slime a monster, right? When you hit the pressure plate, it's going to trigger and call the start movement script, which then, once we have that, it's going to be able to start getting the vector and moving and attacking the player. So I actually don't think I need this anymore. I was thinking I would put that in there for like a GM related thing to get it to stop moving or whatnot, but I don't think that matters right now. So. I think that's all we have to do. Except for that, which, real quick, before I forget, and say, oh, yep, that's done. We want to add into our little dialogue here. <clears throat> uh, red slime script line 86 or Collision detection needs to be finished. Smile. Okay. And I was doing that because stuff, right? It's gonna be a whole other can of worms. Maybe I get distracted with something else. Maybe I come back to it. But I just find it nice to have that stuff kind of written down, just in case I forget. Like if I get distracted by something, I'm like, okay, I totally forget about this, for example. Um, I can look at it and be like, oh, I, I didn't finish that. So that's that's the thing. Anyway, so now that we have this created, uh, we're probably gonna wanna set the speed to 2.5. And actually, I haven't made it interact with the conveyor belts yet, so... How does the player interact with the conveyor belts again? It is on the velocity. Right. Conveyor change. So we want to do... Direction speed plus conveyor change? Right. Because the movement vector is already being multiplied by the speed. So let me do that. So let me look at conveyor change here. Where is total conveyor change being manipulated at? Matter? Movable block. Okay, and the conveyor belt script, let me just look here. We have player, movable block. Right, so I need to add, I think, another thing for this. For case, enemy. I'm gonna just double check. Why is that? Hold on. What? bad. I need to be out here. Right, hold on. No? Honestly, this is why I wish I could, like, minimize each of the cases. Oh, hold on.
and then add it here. So case enemy, because that's the enemy's tag. Okay, great. And then I think I just need to copy all of this and then just tailor it for the enemy, right? So let's call it EM. We'll go enemy. Or it's going to have to be the red slime script. There we go. And we just got to switch all the PMs to be EMs. I think that should take care of the issue for having that. We can test it once we get it finished, or once we get the guy here doing stuff. Is there anywhere else that does the velocity change? No. Okay, perfect. Ow. <laughs> okay, so let's get... Actually, you know what I want? I want to... Get some hide inspectors here. Save that, let me load over here. And we can see some stuff disappear from the slime script. Excellent. I can hide the animator as well. And his moving I'll keep. Because I think if I... I wish I could make a button. Just like trigger a script. That'd be nice. Anyway, um... Let's also look at the pressure plate script again. I don't have it saved here, crap. Okay, well, I can just open it up here. Okay, so. Okay, so I already have a thing here. So I don't think that Hmm, that's going to be the issue, isn't it? So I don't want to instantiate the enemy. The enemy should already be existing on the map. Instead, what I want to do is do game object, not find game object with tag red slime script dot git component red slime script actually this needs to be enemy and we'll do dot start movement okay gods I so I'm just thinking, if I reset everything, including the red slime, somehow I'm going to have to access the pressure plate. And reset that.
I suppose I can make these public. That way, that happens. I think here need to be public. Not really. So if I make a level reset script, I can just find the pressure plates and I can then, no, I don't want to do that. This is back to public, private. Public, void, reset. Reset PP. And we'll just do is touching equals false and is spawned equals false. There we go. So that way we can uh, determine that this needs to be reset. If there's a pressure plate, it's going to reset everything. Okay, cool. So I think we got that. I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick and we'll be, we'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I also went ahead and got some water while I was at it. Okay. So, everything should be working. The only thing we need to do is for the pressure plate, we want to change the object to manipulate to be the red slime. Okay. And then let's move the red slime He's just hanging out up here. <coughs> I think that'd be good. So let's hit play and see what happens. Here I am. There's the red slime. He's just chilling, not doing anything too crazy. We got an error though. 
and it was here. So, did I not? Oh. It's because of the GM there. I think that's fine. In an actual game that I didn't just hit play to the testing sphere, it, it's fine. But since that update happens every time, it's already gotten better. So if we hit this, oh, here comes the slime. He's coming for us. Oh, gods. Aha, you're stuck on a block now, aren't you, you idiot? Okay, so he does switch which side he's looking at. Oh, he's a little bit too fast. Look at that guy. Look at him go. Also, he, uh, his animation just looks a little bit slow compared to how fast he's moving anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch him down to two and see if that's any better. We're going to get another error, but that's fine. We can even have him move a block for us, which I could use in puzzles. Let's get him on the conveyor belt, see what happens. Oh god. Oh, uh, he didn't like that. Also, I should have him interact with the black hole somehow. Okay. Let's switch him to one speed, see how that looks. I think that might be a little bit better. It definitely looks better with his animation. Oh, he can fall in the hole. Although he is not a, let's, let's pause real quick. He's not a character. Now he is. So now if I lure him into the hole, he'll fall in and respawn at the spawn point. Big brain traps. But the question is, yeah, he's not being triggered by the conveyor belt for some reason. First of all, I'm gonna have to remember to make him character right there. Just to check to make sure that that works and that we're getting the uh, player got hit here. Um, so the invader belt script, here we go. So enemy is going to grab if is an enemy. Why didn't it seem to manipulate them then? So it should be changing. Ask the conveyor change. Okay, well, let's remove these. That way I'm not getting, I'm able to see some more data. Okay, so let's hit play again. Actually, eh. One speed for the slime. Right, so we can see the red slime's stats down here. Let's lure him onto the conveyor belt. Let's see if anything changes. So it did change, the total change anyway. Lure him down a little further. He gets stuck on things easily, but he's just a brain dead virus infected slime. So it, it, it's changing his total conveyor belt, but not the conveyor belt change. So. Why?
So it's going right. So let's look at the right thing here. EM. Make a typo anywhere? Look like it. And I am implementing the conveyor change down here. But it's like it's not even touching the conveyor change. Copy from the player, which we know is working. The block also works. menu manager I don't need either. Kind of got to get rid of some stuff that I don't really need right now. Okay. The auto-talking script. I'll need to edit right now. Okay. So, what is happening? First thing we do is we get the object tag, and we know it's changing stuff, and he is an enemy. We know it's changing the total. Debug dot log. Value should change. Where does conveyor change get set? Is there a conveyor? No, not here. Okay. Let's just try that out. See what happens. Because as he touches that, Assuming that the code works, he should say... So the total conveyor change went to negative two. Negative two. Which makes sense since he went over two values. Oh, I'm dumb. I, I totally forgot. This is just the on trigger and our exit 2D. We need one for. <laughs> we need one for the uh, rest of it. Okay, so let's copy the player stuff again. So basically what was happening is it was only happening when he was leaving the thing there. So red slime script. Red slime script. EM, yeah, and I'm just gonna do 
PM. PM. Oh, frick, that's not what I wanted to do. Now I want to do it, though. Replace, 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 replace. There we go. Just replace all the code that was there. Okay, so now we can try it and we should have what we want. All right, come here, Red Slime. So because he's moving quite slow and the conveyor belt force is quite quick, he should just get shot off without being able to do anything. So that's great. But it also means that if you're over here, he's going to get shot real quick across the belts. But he won't be able to cross them like we can. If we can go like this, and we can make some traction backwards. So a good way to get rid of a red slime would be to have him be over here, and then we go this way while he's behind us. That way he cannot follow. So that could be a good thing for a puzzle, like uh, trying to trap the red slime so you can get away and do a puzzle somewhere else, you know? Okay. Get the our red slime works. He's a good little boy. And all that. So let's go ahead and go back to his script. And we're gonna hide these values in the inspector. We don't need to see them. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Hmm. I think I should add a public void reset slime where we do is moving equals false grab the animator and do false here as well although that that just made me think if we have the enemy and we haven't triggered the enemy yet if we pause the game. Watch this. So, this is what would happen if we pause the game as this code works now. Pause. Nothing changed, really. Pause again, and our guy's moving. Okay. Let's remove the red slime um, by making him a prefab. And we'll delete him now. Then we can hit play. And if I pause, unpause. Okay, it does come back to null. Good to know. <coughs> so I think we're going to need a new value in here as well. Called public ghoul has triggered equals false. When we want to start movement, we want to do as triggered equals true. As triggered equals false. And then in GM, when we do this, when we confirm whether or not the person is there, we just want to do if enemy dot get component red slime script dot has triggered equals true we do that and we can get rid of these debugs do I have a debug here too? I didn't Okay, so now essentially what happens, anytime you pause or whatever, the enemy is going to stop moving. 
That doesn't matter. That's just fine. However, he's only going to re-trigger his moving if they have been triggered before. Right? So that's perfect. That's what we want. Now, let's go over everything else that we have made that can be manipulated. The movable block has nothing that we need to change if we reset it, except for its spawn point, but that's something else we can figure in. Okay. Let's do Get rid of that. Now that we've added the enemy to the pressure plate, Right, I keep looking at this like, why does it work when the player touches it? But I keep forgetting anything can touch it, so it's not checking to see, because I'm like, oh, we're, we're looking for a movable block, or we're looking for if an enemy touches it. But it's... I'm just so dumb. Ignore me. Okay. So I think now that we have the enemy also touching the pressure plate, that's fine. Okay, so let's create a new manager script called level reset. And we're just going to make a public void reset level. We're gonna need a couple of things. Serialize field, list of game objects called spawn points. These are gonna be the list of every single spawn point for every single item in the game. Whether it's a movable cube, player, a red slime, etc. Next, we're gonna have serialized field, list of game objects called Items to set at items to respawn. So things like the player, the slime, um, and that kind of stuff. I guess I just need a serialized field game object and then player spawn. This is going to be different from that. And then we're going to have things like pressure plates that aren't going to have spawn points. So serialized field, game object, pressure plates. And the same thing, but with levers. And I think that's all we want to do. At the moment, anyway. Just thinking here. Huh. Well, let me actually look at my, my thing here. Prefabs. So we have... The levers, which interact with doors, we have the blocks, the pressure plates, the immovable blocks, which aren't going to matter because they can't be moved. Uh, I guess we have the... 
Pitfall. So we'll add that. Serialized field, game object, pitfalls. Do I have the pitfall script? Do not. Okay. Let's grab that real quick. Uh, uh, oh, have I not made this a prefab yet? It is now. There we go. Okay. Looking here. Path levels. What happens? This one might be hard to reset. Because I destroy this object. I could change how this works. Let's add a public void reset pitfall. And we're going to do new Triggered equals false. Okay. And then if the block goes in, we want to do as triggered equals true. We're just going to rewrite the entire code of this basically. So we can reset it. So. That one we want to keep because we're going to destroy the block. We then want to take, instead of instantiating this, This is rough. So, mm. let's open up the pitfall. Let's I wanna eh. No, that'll work anyway. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Um so the pitfall is part of the background. This, we're going to make a sprite renderer and throw that into Right. Let's get rid of these two. Let's 
let's open up assets this one and throw that one there let's copy paste that throw that one there can't tell which one's which um okay so this one is the one that's horizontal Block 17, yeah, 17, so horizontal. This one is vertical. And these are going to be sorting layer above background. They're above them. But they're going to be hidden. Okay? We'll get to that in just a moment. So, what we're going to do instead of instantiating an object and whatnot, we're going to do horizontal and vertical. Then we're going to do a private bool is vertical. No, it has to be a game object or a serialized field. Serialized field, boolean is how okay so now what we want to do is instead of destroying everything we check if is vertical equals true and if vertical is true we do vertical dot set active equals true If it is not, we do horizontal dot set active equals true. Okay, following along. Now, that means what we can do here is we can do vertical vertical dot set active equals false and horizontal set active equals false, which is perfect for what we need, but we can also do has triggered, or if statement, if has triggered equals false, we can just copy all of this into here. So even though we're not destroying the original object, which has a hitbox that resets everyone's position. We do have a way to reset it now. Now if we hit save and go back to our pitfall, we will have our horizontal and vertical things here, which all we have to do is drag our vertical and horizontal, oops, that one, horizontal, there, perfect. Now we can save, and the pitfall can now be reset. Excellent. Let me look at this pitfall real quick, like, love to see it. So this one doesn't matter. If it's vertical or horizontal, so we can just leave it how it is. All right, so the pitfall can be reset. So what we want to do in our level reset script is for each game object G in, we'll just do pitfall since we know that one is proper now. Oh, right. These should all be lists. Because there could potentially be multiple of them in any one level. So, g dot get component pitfall script 
dot reset pitfall. We're going to reset all the pitfalls so that they are taken care of. Then for each game object G in spawn point matter. Um, actually don't want to do that. We want to do pressure plates. We want to do G dot get component pressure plate script dot reset PP. There you go. So I think the pressure plate script has been fixed. Yeah. So reset PP. Reset PP. Let me just think here. So that's not all we have to do in here. Unfortunately, because uh, we need to undo what the pressure plate has done. So we want to do hmm. So in the case that it has an enemy, we can ignore that. What we can do though is check if is one object equals true else. So if it is not one object, we basically just have to do the opposite of this and set the original true and the not original to be false. Be easy. If it is a block, that's going to be a little harder to do since we're instantiating blocks. But actually, I don't think it matters. Yeah, let's let's do this as uh, not equal to true. So if it's false, that it's one object. We'll just reset the objects there. So like, uh, that's fine. Because the enemy, we're just going to, if there's an enemy, we're going to move them back to where they were at. To begin with. And with a block, if the blocks are all labeled as movable blocks, so in the reset level, we want to do list of game objects uh, blocks equals game object dot find game objects with tag movable block Was that uh, one of these? All right, it's a fucking string. Game object blocks. There we go. Okay. I think I could still use a for each though. So we want to do if. Blocks dot blank is greater than zero. We want to do for each game object block in blocks. We can just call it that. It's fine. Destroy block. I don't think that'll cause any issues. It could, though. That's my concern. Because I know sometimes, like in lists, if you remove a value and then you try to do something. But I mean, an array can have null values in it. Right. 
So I think that's fine. So here we'll find all the blocks, destroy all the blocks. Easy. Next, serialized field, game object, uh, enemy, serialized field, game object, enemy spawn, and then serialized field, game object, enemy cage. Okay. So the destruction of blocks will take care of any pressure plate spawn blocks. That's simple enough. The pitfall clears itself out. I think I can get rid of the pinfall thing now. Pressure plate, I think I can get rid of it now. The levers. Let's do the levers next. So we'll do for each game object. Oops. Game object G and levers. We basically need to undo this. So G dot get component in children lever script. Dot reset levers. Public void reset lever. Save that, which should allow me to What do you mean lever script does not contain it? It's right there. Reset lever. Did I spell something wrong? Oh, that's level script, not lever script. Ugh. Names, just so similar. Lever. Couple of things to do here. Easiest thing to do is object or ob original. We set that one to true. Object to change, we set it to false. That way it just undoes what the lever did. We then want to do is colliding equals false, is activated equals false. Then we need to make sure that the lever is switched to the off position. So we just need to do Zero point seven five F. Great. So that undoes the change that the lever flicked. It undoes those booleans. It changes it back so the lever is facing the normal way when it gets flicked. Or whatever. And that should be all. Okay. The lever reset is done. Okay. That takes care of the blocks, pressure plate, pitfall, the levers. Was there anything else that I have right now that kind of is important other than other stuff, obviously? Okay. So we're going to want to just move the player. So, um, game object dot find game object with tag player 
dot transform dot position equals player spawn dot transform dot position. Just kind of like when we go in a pit hole. Get pitfall, right? Reset player location. Reset levers. Reset pressure plates. Reset pitfalls. Destroy all blocks. Okay. So now we need to move the enemy back to their spawn point. So reset enemy. We want to do enemy dot transform dot position equals enemy spawn dot transform dot position. We also then want to take the enemy cage dot actually yeah screw it dot set active equals true. I should be checking. <clears throat> I should be checking to see if there's actually these things exist. So. If pitfalls dot count is greater than zero. If pressure plates dot count is greater than zero. If levers dot count is greater than zero. The player will always exist, so they don't have to have to check. to do the enemy though. I always forget, if you don't assign a value, is it null? Let's just say it equals null. So we'll do if Enemy is not equal, oops, not equal, null. We will do this. And if enemy cage does not equal null, the cage to be equal or active, whatever. Because the cage is going to like kind of contain the enemy until they trigger releasing it. That's going to kind of be what happens there. So maybe I also in here add a another serialized field game object cage, and then when we do start movement. We want to do cage dot set active false. I did make the reset slime just for this too, right? So enemy dot get component red slime script dot reset slime. That should probably actually happen first. 
before it gets moved? Well, yeah, that's that's fine. That'll stop it from moving, and it'll resell all of its things, and then it'll transport it to the cage or its starting position, whichever. Okay. Now that's the at. Now we just have these two things to deal with, the spawn points and item spawns. So, reset, loose items, at their spawn locations. So, we just want to do if item or items respawn count is greater than zero. Are you limited to items respawn? Okay, whatever. First, we just check to make sure we have any items to actually respawn. These are going to be things like uh, the blocks. Then, what we're going to do is for each um, game object gene items respawn, we're going to do game object uh, x uh, equals g dot. Is that what I want? No. No, yes it is. We want to do instantiate G. And then we want to do X dot transform dot position equals. And then we want to do spawn points of counter. And here we need to make an int counter equals zero. And then counter plus plus. What is this? Dot transform dot position. Okay, yeah. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to take our list of items, probably just movable cubes right now. And it is going to spawn them at their spawn points. So essentially what we'll have when we go here to add level reset, we're going to have our player spawn point, which I'll just go ahead and drag that over there for right now. and we're gonna have our spawn points and items to respawn. Now the key with these is, let's say we have a movable block in one of these items. Well, we're going to need to have, if I create an empty, for example, um, block one spawn. I can just name it that. If I move that here, that'll be where the block is going to spawn. So I would then, want to take this movable block and put it into the items respawn and then take this block one spawn and put it into the excuse me oh because that's in a other place Go up. Now we can do that. So that. So that's how that works, right? And then we just need to make sure that the item is the same element number as its spawn point. Otherwise, it's going to cause all kinds of havoc, and that is not good for anyone. So, really not good. But we're just going to go ahead and delete these now. I don't need these in here. The level reset script is not going to happen unless we have a slime slime boy slimy slime slimy slime slime or slime slimy slime 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 yeah so that's all we have to do for this level reset i think
Now. Now, 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 now. I think. I think. That. We also need to reset the timer. But did I have a timer reset? I totally forgot. I think we did. Um, it's in GM, right? GM timer script. So let's do finally uh, game object dot find game object with tag GM dot get component timer script dot reset timer. That way, if you're gonna, you know, if you get touched by the slime, it's just gonna reset your progress uh, completely. So you're basically fresh start, start fresh. I could not reset the timer, but that just doesn't seem fair, right? It's gonna, it's gonna kind of be like, if a slime touches you, you die. And then a new slime has come in just as you are witnessing it to control them, right? Yeah. Okay. So now that that has all been taken care of, all we really need to do is do game object dot find game object with tag level dot get component level reset dot reset level. And that, whenever the slime touches us, will reset everything. So now we can grab our handy dandy little note thing here, which slime follows you, reset the puzzle to touch you. Precaution needs to be finished. So that is now finished and done. Excellent. There is one other thing I want to do now that we have a level reset. And that is going to be in the GUI. I think I can do this. So let's open up the pause menu. Here it is. And let's add a new button called Reset Level. Actually, let's just copy a button, actually. But we're going to have to make the, the buttons, make some space here. Copy you up here. But right now I'm just going to eyeball this to get them relatively spaced out evenly. And then reset level. Okay, so in the pause manager script, which I'm not sure if I have open anymore. We're going to do a public void reset level. We'll just throw that away for right now while we get the button finished. Okay, so here's our reset level button. And you know, I don't think I'm gonna meticulously change the position of the buttons. I think that's good enough. We're gonna change this to be the reset level. Excellent. I'm just thinking of how I want to implement this when you do anything else. But I don't think I do. Okay. So let's hit save. 
Reset level, reset level, reset level. On pause. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and go back to here. Let's grab this. All right. So what we'll do is we'll do game object dot find game object with tag um, level dot get component level reset dot reset level. And then if we hit reset level, we want to go ahead and resume the game. So as soon as you hit that, it's basically equal to hitting resume and reset the level at the same time. Make sense? Makes sense. Okay. Let's save this and we'll test it out. We're gonna have to do a little bit of finagling with some stuff here, but that's fine. So I'm gonna move the movable block up a little bit. The movable block, we can go over here. Lever, let's go ahead and switch it over here. Just a moment, god damn. My eyes started getting out of focus for some reason. Let me take a second here. It's weird. All that leaning close in to the computer and stuff. Really just getting your goat, you know what I mean? Okay. Ugh, all right. I'm gonna just move the movable block a little bit as well, and the pressure plate, let's move it down here. Um, okay. So let's take the movable block spawn, put it there. Now we just need to kind of edit these things here and add stuff. So let's go ahead and add the pressure plate. Let's add the lever. Let's add the pitfall. And then in our thing here, we want to add our movable block and the block spawn. Simple as that, right? So now, if we hit play, I should be able to do some stuff and then reset the level. So let's hit this, boop. Let's move the block a bit. We'll go ahead and move it directly in there. Hit the pressure plate, which is still triggered to an enemy right now, but that's fine. We'll just clear that terror out. All right, so we can see that door opened. So what if we hit reset level? Hold on. It uh, gave me an error for the item respawning. Did not like that. Oh, right. This needs to be a prefab and not the actual item that's in the world. go. Let's try that again now. And then it shouldn't error out. So flip the switch, push this into there. Let's make sure that happens. And then I'll go stand over here. We're at 13 seconds. Reset the level. Everything resets. Cool. Now let's just make sure that if I manipulate some stuff, it's going to work. It did, hurrah. Oh, so beautiful. You'll love it when a plan comes together. All right. I think we made some decent progress here. Um, just reading my thing here, so. Okay. Let's do one, two, three for that. So I don't think there's anything else that I need to do at the moment. Let's just kind of look over things that we've done. Let's, let's just wrap things up for today. My voice is getting raspy. 
Um, so we managed to make a way to reset the level. We added our little slime enemy here who can follow us and will reset the, the game if we get touched by him. Um, we set up the main menu's loading level area, which was just splendid and great. I can just look at the scripts that we've added. So we got the red slime script. We made a level reset script. We made a... Yeah, that's all I have. We were really just stuck in the... Uh... <laughs> in that damn... level selection thing for like two, three hours, weren't we? But after that, we managed to get straight through it. Perfect. And then we had like an two hours working on the uh, slime, and then the last bit was just the level reset, which needed a little bit of rework, so good time. So next. <sighs> next. Oh, next. I don't want it, but maybe we do the save. Saving is such a pain. So before we do that, uh, let me look at the... Finish level script. Where's that at? Here it is. Closed it for some reason. Um, so we were needing to add more high scores at the end of each level. Let me look where that's at. Level number. Number one, two, three, four. Right. Right, because I just have to do that for every single level that there exists in the game. That's what that was, right. So that's something that's just kind of as we make levels, we add them there. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and close out of this. What day is it? It is Wednesday, right? Yeah. Okay. Music, stop. So I think next time we're going to work on saving. Unfortunate. But that's just going to be how it is. So, ladies and gentlemen. Boys and girls, everyone out there. Next time, we'll be working on making our game able to save, which will happen at the end of each level automatically without the player having to do anything. It's going to save all of our progress for high scores. It's going to save our um, various other things like our, our highest level, um, the current level we're on, all that good jazz, and then we're gonna have to load it when the game loads and figure out what we're doing with all of that. So that's probably gonna be what we're doing tomorrow for the whole time. Uh, if by some miracle, we manage to wrap it up pretty quickly, because uh, we will just be using code from my previous game, so I might actually succeed in doing that. Uh, we'll start making our first level, I think. Or we'll just work on making those 40 other uh, high score things in Event Tracker. Yeah. But everyone, that'll be all for today. Thank you all for hanging out and watching. Um, if you missed anything, if you missed anything, excuse me, my chair likes to squeak. If you missed anything, it's on YouTube. Um, if you are watching on YouTube and you want to catch a stream live and ask questions while I'm working on stuff, um, twitch.tv slash like and cheeky. Uh, the link is in the description for both my Twitch and my YouTube on both sites. So check it out there. Anyway, bye for now.